If I had to pick just one aspect of motorcycle safety that I would want to concentrate on most, I think this is it. It's what's inspired me to start the Rider Skills YouTube channel. Hey everybody, welcome to Rider Skills. I'm Neil. This is the channel for motorbike safety advice and riding tips. Out on our bikes, there are always aspects of our riding that we could improve upon. Since I launched Rider Skills on YouTube, I found it pretty useful uh, watching some of the footage back that I've created. Um, it's helped me not only to share my knowledge, but also to be more critical of my own riding. Uh, it's firmed up my opinion that there's always room for improvement. And I want to better myself all the time. I want to sharpen a few things up and not become complacent. One of the things I pride myself on is my defensive riding and observational skills. Uh, it's a part of my skill set that I feel most at home with. But as I said, I do still feel there's room for improvement. I've spotted a couple of things on a recent ride which sort of highlighted where I could improve and I might have placed myself, I might have been able to place myself in a less vulnerable position on the road. Nothing occurred, but it just helps me look at things from a different angle. Let's have a look at them, see what you think. Okay, here's a scenario. As you can see on my screen now, I've got three lanes of traffic, if you like. I've got a left-hand lane, a middle lane, and the right-hand lane. On my left-hand side of this situation, I've got a white golf about to come out of a junction. I'm in a good position where I am now. It's unlikely it comes straight into the middle lane, but I've got, um, as you can see, if I just move my mouse about, I have got uh, a lamppost here, but I'm pretty safe and confident that he's not seen me. My issue here is I've got this truck here that's, even though I've got a reasonable distance, I've got a little bit of a restrictive view of the road. If I move it along, just watching. have a look there. What I've got, I've got myself in a good position, but if you look, there, there's a white people carrier, and just to his right hand side, coming towards this queue of traffic here that's turning right, he's in their lane, so he's obviously looking to turn right into here, coming towards me. What I do now, as I move ahead, I spot a red, sorry, a black Jeep here coming out. I move out. Ooh, now I'm, I'm, quite, I've got a better view. I'm quite close. At that point, I'd hidden myself, if I just go back slightly, I can't rely at this stage, if I go back, on that guy in that car coming towards us, whether he's seen me at that position. Oh, another one now. So I'm hidden I'm there, he can't see me. And I move out. This laser, I've got a better view. He gets to see me at the first point there. So he only sees me for a second. There was nothing to say he couldn't have come across the front of me. He didn't. I was lucky in that way, but we can't rely on luck. We've got to keep them little things in mind and look at what people can, and consider what people can see of you. That's an important factor. I'm, I'm, I'm out in that area now where I'm safe. I'm beyond him straight away and I'm safe on this one, but it's weighing up the, the pros and cons of where you position yourself in the road. Onwards, let's go to another scenario. Next. Shopping trolleys, that's what it is. You won't go to the longest queue in the supermarket, so why would you do it in in traffic? Exactly right. You've got to watch for other people with the same idea coming across you. So I'm here. So it's I'm approaching a set of traffic lights. I've got a restricted view by the petrol tanker in front of me. If you look in my mirror to the left here, I've got a couple of cars. Now, I've got a feeling that that one is quite over to the left in my mirror. So he's going to follow this. Hyundai, people carrier, but I can't guarantee it, I haven't got an eye on his indicator at that point. I'm in second gear, the cars are moving to the left. Now I've got a gap there on the left hand side. Looking in my mirror here, I've got a good possibility that he is now moving to the left hand lane to follow this one. However, I've still got a restricted view and I can see at the side, again, same scenario as the last one, if you look where me little arrow is there, there's a 4x4 four four waiting to turn right in front of me to 
come across the front of me at the junction. Now at that point I could have considered, because of my restricted view because of this petrol tank and moved across to the left hand lane, a quick shoulder check. I would have known it was a space, safe space to go to. As it happens, he didn't move across, but with my power, I'd have been better off giving it a squirt through the junction just to get to the left hand lane and put myself less at risk of conflict with this particular, what is that, a Toyota 4x4. Again, nothing happened, but it's something that pointed out to me when I re watched the footage that I should have watched it a little bit more. Moving on to the next scenario. He was in the danger point coming the other way then. I even mentioned him. So moving on. What's good this guy here? Now th this is a great scenario. Now what I've done in this scenario, I've got a good gap between me and that white Toyota Hiace up front. And I've already spotted, and if I just go back slightly, the angle of that Toyota Hiace there, he's turning right in front of me. He's got a good view of me there, this guy here. but he still came. But I spotted it happening, and luckily I wasn't up the arse of that car in front. That's one of the things about defensive riding. You do not want to be too close to the vehicle in front of you, because he's hiding what people can see of you. He's come straight across me there. See, this, that's an exact, exact example, example of what I'm talking about. Easy. Even his number plate was exact five, bizarrely. But that was an example of what I'm talking about, not being too close to the car in front. So you're not restricting your view and also other people's view of you. You can sometimes use other vehicles as a buffer, which I'll show you in a second, uh, to protect yourself a little bit. But in that scenario, I'd left myself a good gap and that's worth its weight in gold. I wasn't losing any time by not racing up there. In fact, it gave me plenty of chance to see that high ace coming across the front of me. Now, I'm in a queue of traffic, same journey, and I'm not too close to that van in front, this Merc Sprinter, but being a commercial vehicle, again, he's restricting my view of the road and he's got black tinted windows. I'm not picking up any clothes through him either. What I do here, and again, if you, if you can see the mirrors, there is a car behind me on my left hand shoulder, but he's quite a way back and I'm keeping my eye on that, but at the same time, I've got an option to go to the left lane, road. but because there's a junction here now he was he was here but just behind me there's a vehicle here but there's a, there's a scenario now where I need to be possibly dropping back a little bit so I do and I'm, instead of moving to that left hand lane what I've done to the black tinted windows I moved across to my right slightly drop back and just ease up and I moved across here and I immediately I could see some brake lights on the vehicles in front of him and you can't possibly see it on the screen there but I've got a white, another white, high ace, they're everywhere. And he's in the lane, in a, like a, a refuge in the middle, waiting to turn right to go in the same direction as I am. A little bit, I can see, now I can see braking traffic up from there. I can also Is see brakes. And at that point, I've got the power, Van, well, the shoulder checks, and I've moved into the left hand lane. Here's a situation where what I've done is protect myself a little bit with putting a barrier between me and that white van. And the, uh, that's pulling off from the right hand side behind this Merc Sprinter. Right that lane. So I'm going to protect myself a little bit by moving across here. And there's your white van there that was potentially going to come into my lane. And what I've done, I've moved across to this particular lane. There he is. And I'm safe. But that's the scenarios that I'm talking about. And it's just considering what people can see of you. If you can't see them, they can't see you. More so because you're on a bike, you're a vulnerable motorcyclist, you're a vulnerable road user. So that's a little bit of a scenario that I'm talking about. Keep yourself visible at all times. I think what you've always got to ask yourself is, what's your danger at that particular point in time? Where can I position myself to ensure that I'm least at risk? What if is the scenario? What if somebody moved into my lane? What if somebody can't see me? Am I too fast for that situation? Am I too close to that vehicle in front? It's all common sense stuff, but it's not something that we do all the time. Um, you can consider if that car's too close behind you, can it stop? You can back him up a little bit. If you've seen in the distance that the cars are slowing up, 
you might not need to slow up at that point. However, the guy behind you might be up your backside. You can slow him up, you can back him off, you can wake him up by maybe feathering your back brake or your front brake. Just get your back late, back light, brake light lit up. And it just sharpens him up. It might make him drop back a little bit and give you a little bit more of a braking space. Um, you can actually control traffic flow a little bit by your own actions, of course. Uh, it's all about being a prominent presence on the road. And I'm not talking about bullying. I'm talking about being prominent, being visible and therefore safe. Don't be a shrinking violet. Be visible and whatever you do, don't be this guy who I'm going to show you a clip of, who, considering what he does for a crust, should know better than to speed up on the inside of everyone through a junction. This is a pretty compelling bit of information that you see here where the guy on his motorbike didn't consider what people could see of him. And despite being legally in the right, of course you'll have heard this before, there's a lot of people out there that are laid out in hospital bed that were right, in the right, and had the right of way. What's no point in being having the right of way if you're on a hospital bed? So ride safe people, watch this last clip.